Hey guys, let's get more news about Steelers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Depot After Dark, Corderell Patterson Gets Married, Russell Wilson Plays Basketball, Heinz Ward Attends Coaching School. A Steelers Depot Daily Segment A quick hit of some Pittsburgh Steelers-related stories that may not require a complete article, but nuggets worth mentioning and passing on to you guys. It seems like new Steelers return man, Corderell Patterson, had a pretty successful offseason. Not only have the kickoff rules been altered in favor of returners, but he also recently got married. Entering his 12th year in the NFL, Patterson has consistently been one of the league's best kick returners. He even holds the record for most kick return touchdowns in NFL history. Now, Patterson will have even more reason to perform well this year. Based on his new wife's Instagram, it seems the two got engaged in January of 2023. Luckily, thanks to these new kickoff rules, Patterson should be able to extend his career for a few more years. However, that probably means he'll spend less time with his family. Hopefully, he and his wife will enjoy their honeymoon. Russell Wilson will most likely be the Steelers' starting quarterback once the season begins, and he's been working hard this offseason to make sure that's true. However, it looks like Wilson has taken these last few days before training camp begins to make some memories with his stepson. In a video posted to his Instagram story, Wilson and his stepson can be seen shooting around and playing basketball at the Dallas Mavericks facility. Wilson is actually already a two-sport athlete, being an NFL quarterback for years and also being drafted to the MLB once upon a time. Adding basketball to his repertoire would continue to round out Wilson's skills. Heinz Ward may be more well-known as the Steelers' Super Bowl XL MVP, but he's working his way up in the coaching world now. Starting as an offensive assistant with the Steelers in 2017, Ward is now the wide receivers coach at Arizona State. It appears that, much like when he was a player, Ward is putting his all into coaching, making a recent appearance at the Texas High School Coaches Association Coaching School, as seen on Texas High School football coach Matt Hoff's Twitter. The event appears to aim to develop and educate young coaches in multiple sports. It's unclear if Ward was there as a speaker or simply to learn, though. Either way, it seems he's taking coaching as seriously as he can, and maybe one day, he'll even end up back on the Steelers' staff. Something switched, bro, college teammate raves about Joey Porter Jr.'s growth. Football isn't always linear. Despite the coaching adage, it's not always about getting 1% better. Some players, the ones destined to play on Sundays, are capable of exponential results. Giant leaps and bounds in their play. Such is the case for Pittsburgh Steelers CB Joey Porter Jr., just ask former teammate Tarek Castro-Fields. Teammates at Penn State, Castro-Fields was asked about Porter's college arc We got this Joey Porter kid. He's gonna be a great one, Castro-Fields told the sit-downs Ernest Walker and Jordan Minor, referring to Porter's hype coming onto campus. He's guarding A.B. at the Steelers' practice, all that, so when he first got to school, I think he still had to learn like how to move and his coordination. Because he just got done playing receiver. Porter, the son of Joey Porter Sr. who played and eventually coached the Steelers, took a few reps against Brown over the years. Not during actual Steelers practices, to be clear, but messing around before or after, the chance for a teenager to see what the peak of receiver play was like. As Castro Fields notes, Porter played plenty of wide receiver in high school. Per Max Preps, Porter caught 14 passes and four touchdowns in 2016 at North Catholic. Transferring to North Allegheny, he caught four more combined scores across his junior and season seasons. But cornerback came clearer into view, and he attended Penn State to play in the secondary. Once Porter got comfortable going backward instead of forward, his play rocketed into stardom. But once we got to that 2020 year, something switched, bro. Despite a COVID-shortened year, Porter played in eight games, recording 33 tackles and four pass breakups. 
Castro Fields reference to play in the first game of the year that showed Porter had become a more impactful hitter, something every WR lacks, but every DB needs. His transformation was complete. I think it was his third play of the season. We set a corner blitz off, he hit him in the blind side. His left side. I'm like, yeah, he's meant for this. Because you know we're nothing but thorough, here's a look at the play against Indiana, a game the Hoosiers would pull off a stunning overtime upset. Ultimately, Joey Porter's production was never flashy, a product of teams hesitant to throw the ball his way. But he became a top college corner and eventual top 32 pick. The confidence Porter gained early in his career has fueled him since. Once he had that real confidence where he felt like no one could really say nothing to him. He don't care about nothing. I already knew he was gonna do great. So far, so good for Joey Porter Jr., coming off an impressive first year for the Steelers and will enter his sophomore NFL season as the team's number one corner. Castro Fields will look to stick in the NFL with the Washington Commanders, appearing in eight games for the team last season. Insider, Steelers could add OLB to Brandon Ayuk trade. The Pittsburgh Steelers remain one of the favorites to land San Francisco 49ers star Brandon Ayuk this offseason, but a trade for the all-pro wide receiver won't come cheap. If Pittsburgh is going to make the move happen, many believe it'll be for a high draft pick, but one team insider speculates whether or not they can toss a player in as well. Speaking with 93.7 The Fan, the Athletics' Mark Cabley said an IAC trade is in the 49ers' hands, and if they're willing to make it happen, the Steelers would be open to it. It's all in the 49ers' court to be honest with you, Cabley said. Why would you get rid of him right now, at $14 million, if you're not going to make your team instantly better? So, the only way you make your team instantly better is you trade player for player, right? Player-for-player player trades don't really happen a ton in the NFL right now. They would want something to help them this year. And what do the Steelers have? I mean just hypothetically speaking, to offer them to make them better. As for what they'd have to give up to acquire the All-Pro wideout, Cabley questioned whether or not they could toss names like Alex Highsmith or Dan Moore Jr. in a package to lower the blow of a draft pick. He, Highsmith, is the one guy that would be sort of interesting, Cabley said. A pass rusher that they need, maybe throw a Dan Moore Jr. in there. Maybe you go that route. I don't like that route. I don't think they would do that route. Highsmith, 26, signed a four-year deal with the Steelers in 2023. With 55 starts under his belt in the NFL, the former third-round pick has contributed 29.5 sacks and 40 tackles for loss to the Steelers' defense. As for Moore, he's still viewed as the starting left tackle in Pittsburgh. That could change with the draft pick of Troy Fatanu, but for now, he's in position to keep his job entering the final year of his rookie contract. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Brandon Ayuk? Leave your opinion in the comments.